Welcome to Dublin! <laughs> We landed after a night of actually zero sleep and it was very turbulent which kind of hit my motion sickness so not feeling the best right now but we are so happy to be here our hotel room which is a really fancy hotel is not ready yet so we're kind of just walking around the city exploring a little bit we stopped to get some caffeine and hoping overall that things take a turn for the better <laughs> So here we are at uh, Trinity College, the uh, only college of the University of Dublin, established in 1592 by Queen Elizabeth I. We're still waiting to check into our hotel here in Dublin, having just gotten off of our overnight flights from New York. And uh, it's a nice place to walk around and look around. There's uh, some definitely historic things they have here, like the Book of Kells, a very ancient manuscript of the uh, gospel, I guess, uh, but we're just looking around and uh, taking in the sights. We were super worried coming now that everything would already be all dead and not so green like you always think of, and actually everything's green, and we also are getting the fall color, so kind of the best of both worlds. So here's the not glamorous side of frequent travel that you don't usually see. Danielle and I just checked into this lovely hotel in Dublin, Ireland with food poisoning. We think we got it from some questionable food in the airport in New York and somehow survived the transatlantic flight. We were supposed to be on a food tour right now walking around chasing some local authentic foods in Dublin. There's no way we were going to do that. Later tonight, we have tickets reserved for an Irish step dancing show. I was really excited to see. It's presented in the form of a dinner show. Not sure. I hope we make it. Uh, the good news is, if you have food poisoning in Dublin, there is no more lovely place to be than the Marion Hotel. It's very comfortable, and we're probably going to be here a while. Hey, Mike, do you want a Guinness right now? <sighs> <laughs> so, because uh, I want to have to be able to enjoy one, but I would not enjoy one right now. All right. Well, hopefully we rally for tomorrow. Exactly. <sighs> Rough day to be traveling, even without two in tow. So we have officially survived food poisoning. <laughs> We are not doing great. We will find out whether or not we can, you know, drink beer in Ireland or eat any food. So far, I think we've had chicken broth and bread. Basically. Yeah. But we're ready to go explore again. If this had to happen, I'm glad it happened in a beautiful hotel. But I think it's time to go see Ireland. I want to see it for real. All right, let's do this. Yep. <laughs> we're going to start off by going to see a little bit about the history of here. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to go have some fun. Exactly. So we're here at the Epic Museum, which speaks about the Irish famine that happened. It's obviously one of the biggest tragedies that happened in Ireland. There should have been about 20 million people in Ireland today, but they lost so many during the famine that there's only about 7 to 8 million. So definitely something we want to learn about before we go enjoy the funner side of the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they actually give you these really fun passports when you first come in and as you go through the museum you stamp them and it also kind of serves as your guide around the whole museum. Alright, let's go stamp our passport. I worked as a nursemaid before my first marriage to an ex-convict. He worked on sheep farms up towards Brisbane where we had 13 children. 
So they actually highlight here also all the things that Ireland's known for. So there's like exhibits on step dancing and we're in a remake of what a pub looks like. So of course I envision myself as working behind the pub here. So what can I get you? Jameson? A pint? <laughs> in this room they actually show footage from around the world St. Patrick's Day celebrations. Definitely gets me in the mood for it. And I even noticed New York and Hoboken in here. So kind of cool. <laughs> So this is a small statuary exhibits near the Epic Museum that we just finished and it represents uh, people making their way towards a ship to try to take them across the ocean to hopefully a better life and uh, on the way you can see they're intended to represent suffering and misery and uh, you know we're gonna have a lot of fun here but it's helpful to be reminded of uh, how far things have come from how bad they were. <laughs> to the Guinness Storehouse in Dublin. So the factory tour is actually self-guided. You get to learn all about how beer is made. They have an amazing bar at the top and some other nice little surprises you'll see along the way. I would recommend buying tickets ahead of time. There can be a line outside and during busy times, it can sell out. We came in November, which I think is a good hack if you don't mind a little bit of chilliness because everything's pretty empty. So I saw people buying same day tickets, but don't count out into the summer. My name is Michael. I'm going to be your guide for this part of your experience. This is the first of two tasting rooms. It's called the White Room for very obvious reasons. After walking down that long, dark corridor into the bright white room, it's supposed to stimulate and awaken your senses. Smell your beer before you drink it. Hopefully you're picking up some of those notes that you smelt inside. Guys, just at the door there, come on, squeeze on in. There's plenty of space here in the front. Let everyone, one, two, three. Gotcha! Amazing, guys. So guys, you want to continue your tour out the jungle door. The crown jewel of the Guinness factory tour is the top floor, which is the gravity bar. And as you can see, it's pretty epic. Take a look as we walk through it. You do get drink tickets with your time at the Guinness factory. What have we here? Well, given that we haven't been able to eat in about 24 hours, <laughs> we thought before we do anything else tonight, we should get some food. And the Brazen Pub is allegedly one of the oldest bars in Ireland, so let's give it a try. Nice.
So you can't come to Dublin without stopping by Temple Street and all the awesome bar scene here. Uh, it gets pretty crowded though, so be prepared, but uh, there's lots of live fun music and a really cool vibe. Would you say it's best for people under 18? <laughs> Obviously it's uh, best enjoyed as an adult. <laughs> time just exploring Dublin and walking around but now we're gonna head to a comedy club which is one of our favorite things to do. Knees and toes, knees and toes. 